Okay, so in this video, we're going to discuss segments in a circle. So, first thing we'll look at here are two chords. If we remember, chords are segments that exist inside of a circle. Their endpoints are on the circle. So, if we look at these two chords, we can call this section A, we'll call this section B, and then this one we'll call C and D. So when they intersect each other, they create these four little mini segments. And the rule that you're going to remember is part times part. All right? So we'll take part A and multiply it times part B. And that will equal part C multiplied by part D. All right? So A times B will equal C times D. Part times part equals part times part. And the parts we're talking about are all on the same segment. So A times B, C times D. Those are both parts of the same segment. Now, if we remember a secant, is a segment that exists outside the circle as well as inside. So if we have these two secants, and again, it's going to create two segments. We have part A and part B. We have part C and part D. So our rule, when we have two secants, it's going to be outside times whole. So it's going to be the outside part, which in this case would be A, and we'll multiply that times the whole thing. The whole thing is A plus B, and that will equal the outside, in this case C, multiplied by the whole thing, which is C plus D. Now sometimes they will give you this whole section, they'll do something like that, right, and call it a number. If, they, if you see a line like that, that's indicating that it's the whole thing. So in that case you would say C times E. And maybe this one up here was something like x. So in that case it'd be a multiplied by x. So you have to be able to think about each of these different scenarios. It's really the same thing, outside times whole. Whichever piece is on the outside, we multiplied by the whole thing. Either that's given to you, as in the case of e and x, or you have to find it by adding A and B. Okay, so our third scenario is a secant and a tangent. So the secant again crosses through one point, or through two points of the circle, and a tangent will intersect the circle in only one point. So what this does is again it will create two pieces here, but there's only one here. So again, our process is still the same. The vertex, the point of intersection is outside of the circle, so we're multiplying outside, multiplied by the whole thing, right? Whenever the vertex, whenever the two segments intersect outside of the circle, you're multiplying outside times whole. In this case, it'll be A multiplied by A plus B, and that's going to equal C multiplied by C. Because the outside of this tangent line is the same as the whole segment. There is no part of the segment that's inside. 
the only segment there is, is on the outside. So it's the outside times the whole, which is just C times C. There's nothing to add. So when we're looking at two tangents, that brings up an interesting thing here. So if these two tangents are tangent, and A is here, and we'll call this one C. So if A times A equals C times C, well then A has to be equal to C. which means that these are congruent. There's no need to multiply A times A and C times C. To get A squared equals C squared, you take the square root of both sides and you end up with A equals C. And if you have two tangents, the tangents, the parts outside, will be congruent to each other. Okay, so those are our four ideas for different scenarios and how they could look. And now let's look at a couple properties of what's happening inside circles. Arcs, chords, and central angles. So, within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent central angles have congruent intercepted arcs. We know that. 55, 55, 55 degrees, 55 degrees. So if the central angles are the same, then the arcs are the same. So we can mark those as congruent. The length of that arc will be the same as the length of the arc. So the measure of NM is congruent to the measure of KL. The length of NM is equal to the length of KL, which also means that this chord will equal this chord. Now the chords are not the same length as the arc, but the chords are the same length as each other. So these three things are all interrelated to each other. If the angles are the same, then the arcs are the same. If the arcs are the same, then the chords are the same. If the chords are the same, then the arcs are the same. So those three pieces are all congruent to each other. So, looking at here, they're saying that these two circles are congruent to each other. So if BOC is 85 degrees, right, then angle DPF, DPF, would also have to be 85 degrees because these would be congruent to each other. If BC would also be 85 degrees, and DF would be congruent to BC, arc BC. If BC is 10, then DF is 10. And this would also equal 85 degrees. So chords. If chords within a circle or in congruent circles, chords that are equal distant from the center are congruent. So you notice that this distance is perpendicular and they're congruent. That means these pieces all have to be the same. If the pieces are the same, then the chords have to be equidistant from the center. So it has to be a biconditional, right? If one of those things has to be true, then all of them are true. And here we have perpendicular bisectors of circles, meaning that if a diameter or radius is perpendicular to a chord, then it cuts it in half, right? Again, we see the right angle here, and again, we see congruent pieces. Anytime you see a right angle coming 
out of the center of a circle, you're going to see that the pieces are cut in half. Right? The perpendicular of a chord contains the center of the circle. So meaning if any time that a chord is cut in half and is perpendicular, it has to go to the center. Right? If it goes to the center, to a chord, then it has to be perpendicular. And if it's perpendicular, then it has to go through the center. Now, that means that these segments here, these radiuses, are all congruent to each other. And that creates a right angle, which creates right triangles. So of course you can do, in that case, a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find different pieces of that segment. Okay, so those are the pieces of information that you need to know about regarding segments in a circle. And when we come back to class, we'll be working on those together. All right.